If memory serves me correctly, in Tynecott Cemetery, where there are nearly 12,000 soldiers remembered, uh, something like 75% have no known grave. And a lot of those are people who just disappeared. And even today, 90 odd years later, the remains of between 30 and 50 soldiers are found annually by farmers tilling their fields. And an average of 300 tonnes of ordnance, uh, shells and uh, similar detritus of war are being found annually. It seems to have no end. And the Somme, it's very similar. New Zealand had a million people. So let's say there were 300,000 households. Uh, there weren't too many households who didn't have a soldier to worry about, be it a son or a husband, uh, a nephew, a cousin, a friend. And so the impact of the losses was widespread throughout the country. 100,000 soldiers went away, 60%. Just under 60,000 became casualties of one sort or another. Uh, about one in six died. Uh, but in my view, uh, the victims included all the survivors because those who came back really spoke of it, that they were psychological victims, they had uh, survivor guilt, why am I back home while Jim or Bill aren't, that sort of thing, and the impact on a complete generation and subsequent generation, their children, uh, was uh, ghastly. I had three uncles who were there, yes. They all came back, I was close to them all, uh, and they did come back, uh, but it wasn't easy to get them to talk about it. When I was growing up as a child in Auckland in the late 30s, the mid to late 1930s, that war was less than 20 years ago, you know. It's now over 60 years since the Second War finished. Uh, and there was a lot of interest in it, but somehow a veil of silence uh, uh, was levelled over it. Um, you didn't talk about it. Uh, you saw, um, I remember saying to my mother, why do these two women teach us, why do they always wear black? Fiancés lost in the war, dear. This was very common. That sort of thing, yeah. No, uh, and it was the first total war. It was the first war in which uh, civilians became casualties. I've forgotten the figure, but the number of the people in the United Kingdom who died from bombing by Zeppelins or Gotha bombers uh, was in the tens of thousands. And, and the casualties among the civilians in France and Belgium were considerable. It started off as a sort of family memoir uh, detailing what they did, but this has been depersonalised and this is trying to give an overview of what a generation of New Zealand soldiers uh, where the New Zealand, the modern New Zealand Army was born there. It was the only time in our history that uh, our soldiers made a contribution to the defeat of, of the main enemy, the main army of the main enemy in the main theatre of war. Not, not, not before or since has that taken place. Well, I was surprised to find how many school curricula and university curricula still in the Great War as part of the history and this this book should be in every school library and in every university library no question I don't say that in a commercial sense at all uh, but this is an important part of the heritage uh, and we believe that it will be sought after as a standard work in institutions of record such as museums and libraries uh, and certainly including school libraries Well, Orman Burton was a brave soldier in the Auckland Regiment in the First War. Uh, he, he was a strong Christian and he came back uh, uh, and became a Christian pacifist and in the Second War uh, suffered for his beliefs, but he was a man of great integrity and a household name in New Zealand in the time leading up to the Second War and during it. He wrote the history of the Auckland Regiment, of which he was a member in the Great War, and, and also another work called The Silent Division. And I was so impressed with that that I've included this in uh, my dedication uh, to those who served in the New Zealand Expeditionary Force and to their next of kin who suffered the anxiety of those days. And this is what Burton has to say. In the waste of war, the valour of such men is the one availing thing. For the most part, they left no heirs of their flesh, 
but it may be that there is a procession from them to men of another generation. If anything is to come to us of New Zealand from the years of bloody ruin, it can only be because we catch something of the marvellous valour and steadfastness and devotion to a high ideal of conduct that led men in however mistaken a cause to keep rendezvous with death at a hundred disputed barricades.